Hey guys, welcome to the PB and J podcast. Where we talk about true crime, paranormal, and whatever else piques our interest for the day. I'm Jenny. I'm Michelle. And we are two sisters just trying to share our hilarity with you guys. And because obviously we're our biggest fans and think <laughs> we're hysterical. Absolutely. So we wanted to share a little bit of that with you guys. So just... Just a fair warning, let's get this out of the way. Some of the content on this podcast may not be suitable for young ears. Uh, we will be talking about things such as uh, true crime, which includes murder, violence, uh, some sexual assault, possible sexual assault. There may be some strong language. Yes. Uh, so listen at your own will just with that knowledge that it may not be something that is easy to hear all the time so and you know another warning is these things that we talk about are just you know our opinions um everybody has one and we love the diversity of it so if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them on our uh facebook page or youtube page um and we will definitely engage in a conversation with you, which, you know, we welcome, um, you know, get involved, get, tell us what you want to hear. You know, we, we love to do research on stuff. So that's one thing that if you've got something that you want to know about, even whether it's here in the United States, here in Oklahoma or anywhere around the world, if it's a true crime or paranormal, please feel free to drop it in and we'll, we'll look it up and discuss it. So yeah, so stay tuned, and we hope you like it. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me tell you why. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. That's anchor.fm to get started today. Hey guys. Hey y'all. So today we're going to talk about a story that has kind of overwhelmed me a little bit. Um, it is the Jennings 8, or also known as the Jeff Davis 8. These, this is the case of eight women who were murdered in Jennings, Louisiana uh, from the time, during the time frame of 2005 to 2009. And this is still unsolved. And um, it is, let me just tell you, it is a rabbit hole of a case. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And doesn't take long to get down that rabbit hole either. So. Yes. So in an effort to not have a five-hour long podcast, uh, I'm going to focus on what I think is the most important a part of this case, and that is the women that were murdered. Yes. Um, so we have, first let me just go through the victims. We have Loretta Lewis, uh, who was last seen, or Loretta Chason, and she's also known by, she was last seen on 517 of 05, and her body was found on 520 of 05 in a canal. Um, next victim is Ernestine Patterson. She was last seen June 16th of 05, found June 18th of 05, um, also in a canal. Next is Kristen Lopez. She was, she became missing on 3-6 of 07, um, and she was found on 3-18 of 07 in a canal. And then we have Whitney Dubois. She was last seen on 510 of 07, found 512 of 07. She was actually found alongside a road. And then we have Laconia Brown or Muggy Brown, last seen 527 of 08, found 
on 529 of 08, also found on the side of the road. And then we have Crystal Benoit Zeno. She was last seen on August 29th of 08 and found on September 11th of 08. She was actually found in a wooded area off of a road. Um, then we have Brittany Gary. She was last seen on 11-2 of 08, found 11-15 of 08 near the, near a highway, sorry. And then, sorry, my phone always goes off before doing this. <laughs> and then the last victim we have is Nicole Guillory. She was last seen on 8-16 of 09, found 8-19 of 09 off of um, I-10. And she was actually found just hours after she was reported missing. Mm. So she was found uh, pretty quickly from when she was reported missing to when they actually found her. It was just hours. So, and just a, just a few days. And generally that's the MO here is that it's a few days between when they were, <coughs> when they were last seen to when they were uh, found. So when their bodies were found. And there are lots of connections here between these victims. So um, let's see. Chris, Kristen Lopez actually lived with uh, Crystal Zeno or Crystal Benoit. And um, she, let's see. Then we have um, Brittany Gary was the cousin of Kristen Lopez. And there's one other connection. So they're, they're kind of like all intertwined. Yeah. Um, Whitney Dubois, um, her uh, child's father was the, uh, her child's father's brother was married to Loretta Chazon. So they're kind of all intertwined and yeah. connected. They were all allegedly um into drugs and into prostitution uh that is they were kind of all from the south side of the tracks i believe yeah all and from the same area that, that is in that area is considered the bad part of town uh if you're from tulsa that's that would be considered what like north tulsa north tulsa tulsa turley so, area um so you know in every town <laughs> now everywhere in tulsa but <laughs> every town has a um has one of those bad sides of town, you know, that's a little more um, kind of the underbelly of that area. So this would be, these ladies were basically from that. Um, and then we, you have a range of ages here. Um, like <clears throat> most of them were mothers. Um, I know at least one of them was married. Um, so it's just, I mean, they're right, they range from the youngest being 17 to the oldest being 30. And most of them were in their 20s. And there were only two victims that had uh, throat injuries. Um, and it doesn't go into like a whole lot of detail as to what those injuries were. I'm assuming that they, <coughs> their throats were cut. Uh, but I don't, I don't have that. It just says the throat injury. Most of them were found badly decomposed, uh, even though they were uh, found fair, within days of being missed or being last seen. Um, the, you know, there was just like a, usually just a couple of days. Like Kristen Lopez, there was she was last seen on the sixth and found on the eighteenth. Uh, but most of them, it's within two to three days. Uh, Crystal Benoit also was, it took a little longer to, for her to be found. Um, so with the exception of those two, uh, they were found fairly quickly after being last seen. Um, but we're in Louisiana. But we're all and in, that's you know, all swamp last area, seen yeah. and all found in, the, in that yeah. area. Um, all of them were from Jennings. They all allegedly knew each other. Um, and they are all allegedly um, were police informants. 
And it's like they all kind of knew or had an idea that this was going down. Um, Kristen Lopez allegedly saw a police officer kill a drug dealer um, in, two years prior to her being murdered. Um, they weren't, I mean, she wasn't the only one either. So, and like, um, let's see, Nicole Guillory, she, earlier that summer, she had placed her, um, her four children with family and see, she went, she went, she was last seen on the 16th of August. Her birthday was on the 28th of August and she had told her mom that she wouldn't be around to celebrate her birthday, that she... And she didn't want to tell anybody anything because she told them it would be better if they didn't know anything. Yep. They, they would be safer if they didn't know anything. So, um, I mean, this case is just crazy. So, let's see. The first victim was found floating in a canal by a fisherman. And there, the backstory to that is... Um, she was found about five miles outside of Jennings. So still in that area, but about just outside Jennings. Um, but she, just before she was found, there had been a, a report of some mannequins being stolen. And the, um, the gentleman that found the first victim thought at first that she was a mannequin uh, because he knew of the story that mannequins had been stolen and uh he he thought that's what it was and then upon closer inspection he he realized that's not what it was that it was actually a human body um so there were two of the victims had obvious causes of death all the other victims were in too advanced state of decomposition to determine their cause of death the suspect the it is suspected that they were asphyxiated so Lots to unpack here. Um, we have, I'm going to go into more, a little more detail on the victims. So um, they were all fairly small. Um, like Loretta Lewis or Chazon was 5'4", 103 pounds. Ernestine Patterson was 5'4", 82 pounds. Kristen Lopez was 94 pounds, 5'2". Whitney Dubois was 5'3", 101 pounds. Uh, Muggy Brown was 5'3 and a half, 123 pounds. So you're not, I mean, you're talking about small women. Very here. small women, yeah. Uh, the uh, Crystal Benoit was 5'11, 170 pounds. So she, so even that 5'11, she's still fairly she's small. She's still because small. At 5'11, she only weighed 170 pounds. So, and then, um, then we have Brittany Gary. She was five foot, 130 pounds, and she was actually the youngest victim. Um, she was born in 1991, uh, so she had just turned 17 mm -hmm. at the time of her murder. Um, and then Nicole Guillory was five seven, 160 pounds. So, you know, all of them were not. We're not talking about girls that could kind of hold their own they might have been scrappy but they weren't it a, wouldn't have been hard to overpower size. them they, they yeah would have been very easy i think yeah to overpower. overpower um so. and plus the fact that they were probably under the influence of something at the time makes right. their reflexes a little bit slower and stuff like that right. so so yeah i mean this is just it's it's a lot they there is a lot of suspicion is that a word, suspicion, <laughs> um, of um, there being some police involvement, and this mm -hmm. is all alleged because this has not been, uh, this has not been, sorry, I got distracted, my sister has COVID, <laughs> just kidding, it's allergies. I have allergies but, real uh, bad. It has, it has not been solved. This no. It's still an unsolved case. Yeah. And, I mean, it's pretty gruesome to me, you know, just... There's a lot of um, there's a lot of talk about one specific um, person being involved in this. Who adamantly and denies the fact he that he's involved. Adamantly denied. Yep. He says he took a lie detector test, and he actually is no longer alive. He passed away, yep. I believe, a year or so ago. Yeah. Um, and that is Frankie Richard. 
Uh, he was a local, I don't want to say kingpin, but he was kind of like the local drug guy, the local uh, pimp, I guess you would say. Uh, and this is a legend. Don't come for me. But Tony had Stephanie Harlow, so but had ties to had ties every to girl, every single one every single girl that was on this page that was a victim here. Yeah, so. every one of them. He had he knew had some type of relationship with um, one or two of them. Actually, even called him Uncle Frankie. Yeah. Um. So they had kind of grown up with and him. and had uh, so, intimate relationships with right. him. So um, and, and pretty soon, before, as the time they were last seen. Yeah. Um, they have this. So, real quick, I want to give you guys the profile information that was printed and passed out in Jennings uh, of the uh, suspect or suspects. Um, so, uh, the first thing is they were superficially glib and charming. They were self-confident, appeared non-threatening initially. They were physically strong. Not to be confused with someone who works out every day at the gym. Frequents the area of the Ziegler shopping mall. They were quick to anger. They would lure girls with alcohol and drugs, specifically crack cocaine. And they may have a formal criminal involved record involving assaulted behavior with a knife and may include burglary. That was on the profile uh, flyer that was passed out in the area. Uh, so they had an idea of who they were working with. There was a lot of reported corruption. Yes. There's a lot of reported um, sex trafficking and drug involvement um, involving the police officers and or sheriff's department and um, inmates in the area. Um, a lot of these were these girls. Um, had been inmates at one had time been or another. At yeah. One time. Uh, so yeah, I mean, just it's there's a lot. It's a lot of if you have a chance to get into it, give yourself some time to get into it because um, one thing I will recommend is there is a new. Uh, I don't know how new it is. I say new, but uh, there is a a program on uh, the ID channel. Um, and it's called um, Death in the Bayou. It's about eight episodes. And it really goes into a lot of detail of uh, what happened and all that stuff. So, um, yeah, what are your thoughts? On um, one thing that's that's always stuck out to me is, and I was, when I was doing a little bit of uh, looking into this, was there is an episode of Dr. Oz where a nurse who worked at the jail mm -hmm. um, treated most of these girls while they were in the jail. Um, said that several of the girls told them that they were going to be killed, that they knew their death was coming and that there was nothing they could do about it. When she asked them if they wanted help, they were like, you can't stop it. Um, when she went to higher ups with this information, she claims that she was met by the FBI and basically told by the FBI that either she shuts her mouth or they're going to ruin her life. And she came forward with this information and they, of course, tried to basically say she's full of it. She doesn't know what she's talking about. It's her word against ours. It's her word against theirs. You know, there's no recollection of these girls saying these things to her. But there were family members that said that if at least a couple, if not all of these girls at one time or another said that they knew they were going to be murdered. They right. knew they were going to die. They weren't going to live. Like one of them said she wasn't going to live to see her next birthday. Right. Which was just like a week or so away. And and most Probably of the families kind of dismissed so. it because of the line of work that they were in and that they, you know, they were drug their users, lifestyle. their lifestyle. But then when it happened, a lot of them were like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. You know, how in the hell did she know she was fixing to die? You know, what's going on? But yeah. they never would. Everybody always says that when they made these comments and they tried to press them about it, they clammed up. They would right. not they go into detail. Share that information with their Do they? family because yeah. they didn't want them to be involved or in yeah. danger or anything like that. Um, I will say, like, one of the things that kind of jumps out for me is that one of, uh, there was, there was a lot of talk about a vehicle that was purchased by mm -hmm. a police officer. Mm -hmm. um, it belonged to someone 
and I don't know the initial owner of this vehicle, but it was a truck, and supposedly one of the victims was last seen in this truck. And that her body was transported yeah. in this truck. Yeah. And this truck was, whoever owned this truck was, I guess, quote unquote, coerced into selling their vehicle to this police officer who in turn cleaned it out, washed it, I was seen washing it at a car wash, um, and then turned around and sold it for twice as what he bought it for. Yeah. And that um, he was actually reprimanded um, yeah. at his job for that specific incident so it's i mean this goes deep guys yeah and really and does. make no mistake and i want to make this very perfectly clear me and my sister both back the blue we are very sure. staunch supporters of our men and women in uniform we uh we understand the crap that they go through every day and that we but we also understand that in every profession no matter what it is there are always bad people that make other people look bad this is one of those instances where things have happened that have been blatantly covered up because of involvement of police officers in that particular unit. And, and, and the FBI at this point is also, I believe the FBI now is yeah, involved in yeah. looking over everything and investigating the uh, allegations yeah. of corruption. It's not closed. <clears throat> this is case it? is very much still open. Yeah. Um, albeit probably fairly cold at this point. But and like Michelle was saying, as we, you know, we staunchly back the blue. My son actually wants to be a police yep. officer. Um, we have family also, members that were. I also don't... Um, think that these women are any less important than, absolutely than absolutely these police officers. right um, regardless of their lifestyle choices or what they were doing yeah. or what they were involved in they didn't deserve what they got no they, no nobody ever deserves that and their families um, deserve answers their families deserve closure they deserve answers they deserve to know what happened to their loved ones yeah some of these and, women were mothers yes they so they mothers, have they have they children have wives, that daughters yes sisters, Ants, so you know, I mean, it just they deserve, regardless. Yep. Deserve absolutely, an absolutely. And someone should pay for what yeah. was done to them. They deserve to have yeah their cases solved, just like every other murder victim who's all that deserves to have their case. Yeah, solved. and you know, it just doesn't matter lifestyle and you right. know, we're all one bad decision away from oh gosh being in, the being same in that place. same boat. Yeah. You know, yeah. honestly and truly don't know until you're until you live it you don't know what you would do in a situation no and um it just plain and simple they are just as important as anybody else involved in this case if not more important yeah. because they're the victim and regardless of what they were doing or saying or seeing or anything like that they didn't deserve this and for their cases to be cold i mean we're talking this started in 2005 and we're in 2021 so yes. what are we 16 years later and their case still isn't solved and, and no closure being solved and this no. isn't this wouldn't be the first time that somebody under a so-called police protection because i believe that this uncle frankie was yes an was, informant as well he was an alleged yeah. uh informant no one's yeah. ever confirmed that um but the it's been said that he was protected. Yeah. So even if he was the one, which no, I'm not saying he was the one that did this because I don't know that. Nobody knows whether there was just a lot of circumstantial it. evidence so that he was very connected to pointed to him. But this so, wouldn't be the first time that somebody that's under police protection committed crimes because I believe there's a serial killer that was under police protection. I think so. And he still committed. There's been mobsters that have been under police protection and still committed crimes. Yeah. And so it wouldn't be unheard of for that to happen. So. And this would, this also, a lot of these ladies were found in or around like the I 10 area. Yeah. So there's some, there is a possibility that they could be connected to the I 10 serial killer murders. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah. it's just, there's a lot of, 
it could be this, it could be that out there on this case, uh, a lot of it, which is why it took me so long to research and do all that. Um, but, you know, I want to leave you with the fact that this is still an open case. Um, these women were cut down in the prime of their lives, you know, 17, 20, 23, you know, that they were all fairly young. The oldest one being 30, which is still to me the prime of your life, yeah. you know, um, 28, 30, 21, 26, 23, 24, 17, and 26. These got, ladies were young. They had their whole lives ahead of them. Um, the very last victim had four children who now don't have a mother. Yeah. Uh, the very first victim also had children. She had two kids um, who now don't have a mother. Uh, lots of them have children that had to, I guess, grow up at this point now without their mother. Yeah. Um, they didn't deserve to be just thrown away like pieces of trash. They did not deserve that. And you will never convince me that they deserved it. No. Because no. I, I don't think they did. No. Um, my heart goes out to their families. They don't have answers. They're still looking for yeah. answers. Um, if you know anything or have heard anything, uh, you can definitely reach out to the... Um, Jeff Davis Parish Police Department or the Jennings or, or the Jeff Davis Sheriff's Office, I believe it is, um, or the um, Jennings Police Department. Um, you can definitely reach out to them. I have a couple of phone numbers. I believe this is to the Sheriff's Office. It is 337-821-2100 or 337-794. 3444. Um, no information is too insignificant. No. Um, what you think is insignificant may be Maybe, what breaks this case. Exactly. Open. May bust it wide you open. So. Uh, but just remember that uh, these families deserve answers. These women deserve to be respected yeah. in their death, even whether or not you respected that what they did in their lives. They deserve their the respect in their death. Absolutely. They didn't deserve what happened no, to them. No, not at all. So uh, that is a very small snippet of the Jeff Davis 8. Um, check out Death in the Bayou on the ID channel. Um, I think it's on the ID Go channel. Um, check that out. And it's a binger, um, so you're going to want to start okay, in the morning. Not gonna, you're not going to want to stop watching it. So. It's, not, it's not super, super long, but I think I watched it in an afternoon. Yeah. I watched all eight episodes. Um, it is very informative. Um, I don't think it's the whole story, um, but there's a lot of information in it, and that's kind of what piqued my interest into this case. I had no idea. Yeah. I did not know this case was out there. I had no idea that there were eight women that had been murdered 16 some odd years ago that still haven't had their cases solved so let's know what you think yeah do your um, research reach out to us on facebook yeah and shoot us an email if you have some story ideas you can either shoot us an email at pb and j uh what is our email again sorry <laughs> <laughs> hold on guys it's been a little bit since we've oh, been on please. here so um, you can send us an email at pbnj7174 at gmail.com um, with story ideas or yeah. anything you want to hear about or hear us talk about. Um, you can message us on Facebook at pbnj on our Facebook page. Um, yeah, let us know what you think. And we hope you have a great week. And... Wish me luck that I keep it together on Tuesday because my kiddo graduated yes. from high school Monday, and I'm already a mess and yeah. it's just Sunday. And it's just Sunday. Uh, <laughs> it started yesterday. Yep. But um, we got family coming in town for the graduation and yeah. just want everybody to be safe and have a good time. And you guys seriously pray for my sister. She's having a hard time with this right now. So I'm on the struggle bus. <laughs> It'll be all right. <laughs> the wheels on the bus are not going round. And nope, round. they're coming they off. Coming <laughs> off so. We're barreling out of control right now. Yeah, for <laughs> so. sure. So, um.